Hi guys and welcome to every episode of Family Guy Season 3 Reviewed. The first two have been good, but not amazing I would say. But despite a lot of the things going on behind the scenes at the time, many fans actually consider this season to be the start of the show's prime. I sure hope I'm thinking the same after I'm done with it. As hinted at, I do have to talk a bit about what was going on with the show at this time. The executive producers for this season were Seth MacFarlane again and Dan Palladino. And interestingly, the final episode, When You Wish Upon a Weinstein, did not actually air with the original season due to Fox apparently being worried about its content, but rather it was included with the DVD of the season when it came out in 2003. Another thing pesky Fox did was cancel the show after this set of episodes. They had already threatened to after season 2, but actually went through with it this time, and the show was put on the shelf. That is until the show's high ratings on reruns and high DVD sales forced the network's hand and they renewed the series in 2005. So yeah, it wasn't exactly smooth sailing for the show, but as we know, Hollywood nonsense rarely has any correlation to the actual standard of a show, so I'm still very much looking forward to this season. If you enjoy this video, or have been enjoying the series in general, please consider helping me out with a like and subscribe. It is always appreciated. And on that bombshell, let's take a look at... Season 3, Episode 1, The Thin White Line. Joe gives Brian a job as a drug sniffing dog for the police department. However, he soon gets hooked on drugs himself. My best cutaway here was the family visiting purgatory. And my best moment was Peter trying and failing to give a fake name. The season opener gets a 4 out of 5. This was another solid Brian episode that tries to expand on some of his problems in life. The fact that he feels the need to keep going back to a therapist says it all about how lost he is. It's always nice to utilise Brian being a dog in a meaningful way, so having him as a police sniffer dog was all good stuff, especially the scene of him exposing what Quagmire had been up to. His vices, of course, come back to haunt him in the end. And after he defends Peter, the episode ends on a cliffhanger with him leaving. I must admit, I'm intrigued to see how this carries over into the next episode. I was not expecting this to be a two-parter. The episode never had that feel to me at all. I'm not complaining though, because as I said, I like this episode. The comedy here to kick off the season was pretty good. The midgets having to jump for their mugshot after they were arrested was comical because of how silly it was. For some reason, although it was a simple joke, I liked the cutaway of the family going on holiday to purgatory, which, fittingly enough, is just a white space where they all float around. So, so indeed. Some of Brian's coked up rants were good, and as mentioned, Peter somehow getting P. Tia Griffin from the things in the room was exactly the kind of silly yet clever Family Guy joke which I really enjoy. Season 3, Episode 2 Brian Does Hollywood. To pursue his screenwriting ambition, Brian moves to Los Angeles, where he stays with his cousin Jasper. He soon becomes a director of pornographic movies. My best cutaway here, Peter disrupting the Cats musical. And my best overall moment was Stewie's audition for the kids TV show. So the follow up episode gets say 3 out of 5. Yeah it just carried on from the previous ep really. And in the end it played out how you would expect. The only complication brought into the plot was Brian being a porn director and struggling to tell the family that fact. Even that came to nothing though, as the ending was fairly rushed in general. I do at least get the impression that Brian gained some more love and respect for his family, so I guess I can call the episode a success in that regard. The Stewie B plot I wasn't particularly into, nothing came of his hypnotism plan, and the only jokes present were Bill Cosby. I mean literally, he was the joke. I'll leave it up to you to decide how those jokes aged over time. That being said, Stewie still produced the best moments in the episode for me, whether it be him muttering jackasses under his breath, or making the poor guy's plane ride hellish. Season 3, Episode 3, Mr. Griffin Goes to Washington, 
a cigarette company takes over the toy factory and appoints Peter as president. They send him to convince Congress to stop a new anti-smoking bill from being passed. My best cutaway here was the cigarette company's subliminal advertising. And my best moment was Peter's board meeting with cigarette company management. This one gets a 5 out of 5. This was solid in the story department, with Peter briefly becoming a puppet type president for this cigarette company. In fact, if anything, there were so many jokes in the episode that the story maybe was slightly underdeveloped. But the story never really felt any worse or for this, because they still made sure to give it the basics which it needed, and has the right message at the end. Peter not only doing the right thing by Stewie, but also for kids everywhere, by exposing the evil company, and what their motives were. But I also love how he's able to manipulate the stupid politicians of Washington DC. Come on. Come on. I mean, let's be real. That is a more convincing argument than most of what goes on in that chamber for sure. What makes this episode great is that it managed to be funny from start to finish. All of the cutaways worked on some level for me, so I can't name them all, but my favourites were the gangsters on the street doing math, gotta consider all the variables after all, and I love the over the top, subliminal advertising commercial. Smoke. Smoke. Are you smoking yet? I love how that guy makes a reappearance later in the episode, at the meeting. Speaking of that board meeting, I found it absolutely hilarious. Especially the gag about the sign not being made in art class, we really do want kids to start smoking. That was so stupid that it works on every level for me. I haven't even mentioned other great moments, like Peter's robot company suck up, or him reciting all the states in less than a second. This has to be the funniest episode so far and therefore the best so far in my opinion. Season 3, Episode 4, 1 if by clam, 2 if by sea. Horace sells a clam to Nigel, a British man who turns it into a British pub. However, it appears Nigel is out to get Peter. My best cutaway here was the Tron parody, and my best moment was Quagmire at the lesbian bar. This one gets a 3 out of 5. This was fine, it was slow moving at times, not too much actually happened if you look at it. The main conflict of Nigel burning down a bar and framing Peter and his friends was left until late on, and obviously the Stewie subplot was not packed full of content. It's not even like there were loads of great jokes or cutaways to liven things up. I mean there were a few, Quagmire promptly getting kicked out of the lesbian bar was one. I like how he bobbed his head along to the music. The Tron parody was also well animated, and was just something different that got my attention. But yeah, this episode didn't do a massive amount for me. Stewie trying to teach Eliza what he considers to be proper English were probably the best bits for me. Much of this episode is spent basically taking the piss out of the British, and the fact that I am British myself means that of course I got the references about cricket and fag meaning cigarette. That is true. Many people do call cigarettes that here. It still didn't particularly help with my enjoyment though, but I can assure you that some of the stereotypes are flat out false. I find myself quite offended actually, because the vast majority of British people are absolutely not charming. You can believe me on that. Season 3, Episode 5, and the wiener is... When Peter realises that Chris has a bigger penis, he is crushed, and has to find a way to become secure in his manhood again. My best cutaway was Stewie showing he knows what it takes to be cool by singing Rocket Man. And my best moment was Lois hiring Quagmire to get revenge on Connie. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. Once again, both the stories here focused on parenting skills, Peter with Chris and Lois with Meg. They both got better as they went on when they actually started to get to the root of the problems. Meg was getting bullied by Connie and her crew, as usual, but it was nice to see Lois have the fire in her belly to go and defend her daughter. The final gag with Quagmire made it all worthwhile too. The other plot had Peter taking pride in beating Chris at everything until he realised he couldn't beat him in the penis sized department. Peter getting super insecure about this was silly of course, but at the same time, maybe realistic? as well as bits of him getting guns and big cars and stuff like that to make up for it. 
Family Guy definitely had fun with the stereotype that people who show off these type of things are somehow insecure with their dick size. Now, do I think there's any truth to that stereotype? Probably, if I had to guess. There probably is some truth to it, to be honest. The ending felt a bit too over the top sitcom-y. The way this bear pops out to attack them, and Chris somehow manages to fend him off to save Peter. It was a cheap way to have a feel-good ending, where they make up. This wasn't the funniest episode ever by any means, but Stewie doing a parody of William Shatner's performance of Rocket Man from 1978 was a great moment. Season 3, Episode 6, Death Lives. Peter skips out on his anniversary to play golf, but he gets hit by lightning and has a near-death experience. Peter's attempt to change Stewie was my best cutaway found here, although it's not that impressive because there were only two of them. And it was hard for me to pick a best moment here, so pretty much all of Peter and Death's interactions were the best bits for me. They really work well together. This one gets a 4 out of 5. And the reason it's got a 4, despite being yet another example of Peter basically not giving a crap about his marriage, is because of those interactions between Peter and Death. That is what carried the episode, because as usual, it wasn't that convincing. The way Peter managed to only wise up at the last second and win Lois back over, and the scavenger hunt he set up, made very little sense when you actually think about it. At least, you can kind of forgive the ass pull ending, because Peter did have a supernatural being helping him, but still, it's not the best way to end the episode really. As far as the jokes here, they were reasonably good. Death is always fun whenever he is on the show, and he certainly was here. Whether it be Peter screaming at his appearance, dealing with his mother, who was a joy by the way, or his date with the animal loving woman at the end. His general awkwardness at dealing with anything outside his job is such compelling viewing for some reason. Season 3, Episode 7, Lethal Weapons. Bonnie invites Lois to a Taijutsu class where she advances to Black Belt. However, Peter is embarrassed when Lois has to save him from getting beat up. My best cutaway here was Stewie playing basketball and my best moment was the big fight at the end. This one gets a 3 out of 5. With the plot built the way it is, the comedy is key as to whether it works or not. This was hit and miss, hence the rating. The bits of the New Yorkers at the start was a bit bland. I mean, it was just a bunch of stereotypes, really. However, Tom Tucker calmly roasting them made it worthwhile. In terms of the main story, I liked how instead of making it all about Peter and Lois again, they got all of the family involved in the squabbling. Now, of course, we get nothing new regarding the family's relationship, but this is the first time that we see them fight in this over-the-top slapstick way. I guess this set the precedent for the type of over-the-top violence the show revels in. Whether that is a good or bad thing, I'll leave up to you. But just seeing them beat each other up, on this occasion at least, I was fine with. It kind of fitted the tone of the episode, given that there was a lot of frustration and angst going about. This wasn't the funniest episode, but I did like Stewie showing the basketball court was his house. Season 3, Episode 8 The Kiss Seen Around the World Meg gets chosen as a school intern for Channel 5, but she is used as a decoy for the media murderer. Fearing death without having her first kiss, Meg kisses Neil. My best cutaway here was the Mr. Peabody and Sherman parody. Quiet you. I know that's a Simpsons reference, but I had to get it in there. And my best moment was Tom Tucker's slow walk. This one gets a 3 out of 5 again. I must admit, I don't care for Meg or Neil really, especially from an entertainment perspective. So it's no surprise their whole kerfuffle never interested me too much. It never produced any humour, only awkwardness. Tom Tucker had a few funny moments, which were the best bits of the episode, whether it be the slow-mo zoom in on him, only for it to be revealed that it wasn't actually slow-mo at all. His line, I guess beggars can be choosers, about Meg not wanting Neil, also made me laugh. In general, the dynamic between Tucker and Diane is interesting. They not only play off each other well, 
They are also great representations of how scummy the media can be. Stewie's little subplot about getting revenge on the bully was decent but no more than that. I have nothing more to say about this one, it's just okay. Season 3, Episode 9, Mr. Saturday Night. After Peter invited him over for dinner, Mr. Weed chokes on a dinner roll and dies. Now unemployed, Peter looks for work as a renaissance fair jouster. My best cutaway here was Peter's old job at the electric company. And my best moment was Peter vs the Black Knight. This one gets a 5 out of 5. Seemingly it isn't a complex story, but quite a lot actually happens here. With Mr. Weed dying and Peter losing his job, even if it was not resolved in the end. In fact, I kind of like how it was left unresolved. Not only does it work as a quick gag for the ending, where the show pokes fun at it, it also sets up some future episodes, where Peter has to try and find a new job. Just like the other 5 out of 5 earlier on, the main reason this is top tier for me is the comedy. There are no duds here, all of the jokes here worked on some level. Let's talk about my favourite, Peter's old job. It's the little things which get me, like how Peter can't keep up with simple words, and how the guy changes his voice when he says the word fat. I kind of don't blame Peter for taking offence, although attacking the guy might be taking it a little far. Other great moments include the Black Knight shaving, Stewie's cereal box fort, Stewie saying to Meg that Peter dressed as a prostitute is eerie, like looking into her future. And let's not forget, this is a legend Ollie Williams first appearance. It's gonna rain! Gotta love that guy. I could go on and on naming the good moments here. Even the big showdown of the episode, Peter's battle with the Black Knight, was capped off with a joke. He was distracted by his car getting towed, and then the extra layer to the joke was that Mort was the one towing it to get his revenge. A very funny and enjoyable one to watch. Season 3, Episode 10 A Fish Out of Water Peter buys a boat and goes on a quest to catch the legendary fish, Daggermouth, for a $50,000 reward. Meanwhile, Lois tries to teach Meg how to be popular on spring break. My best cutaway here was Stewie imagining what the house would look like with more culture. And my best moment, Peter, Joe, Quagmire and Cleveland at the police auction. This one gets a 4 out of 5. Both stories here are pure silliness, which seem to value the journey they take more than the destination they get to. I say that because the Lois and Meg story is all about Lois upstaging Meg as a sociable party animal, while Meg is unable to be one herself. And by the end, Meg also gets some pity cheers from the popular kids, basically just because Lois made them cheer her. I mean, I guess it counts as a happy ending, but it doesn't actually do much for Meg as a character. She still has the same old problems she's always had. Peter's story I found more enjoyable, because even though it was equally silly, with the robot fish at the end, it's always a good time having the four friends hang out together. I think this is even the first rendition of their Would You Rather type game, which is a great recurring thing they do on the show. The jokes and moments make this episode a good one overall. The whole police auction scene was great, of course with Quagmire buying the prostitute's pants, but I also like the more subtle joke about someone paying thousands of dollars for a picture of a boat before Peter buys the real one. And as I said, the cutaway of Stewie, Peter, Brian and Chris all speaking in British accents was great. Oh dear, I spontaneously combusted. Oh, I am sorry. It's quite alright, I've grown tired of living. Very funny stuff indeed. Season 3, Episode 11, Emission Impossible. After Lois's sister Carol has a baby, Peter and Lois decide that they also want to have another. But Stewie feels threatened by this, so attempts to stop them conceiving. My favourite cutaway here was Peter always being there for Lois. And my best moment was, Peter ordering fast food on the way to the hospital. This one got a 3 out of 5. Not the most complex plot, by any means, but an interesting one nonetheless. After the opening set piece of Lois's sister Carol having a baby, 
The rest of the episode is purely about Stewie trying to stop Lois and Peter from having another baby themselves. It is good to see Stewie's tech keep expanding with the way he shrinks himself to get inside Peter and destroy his sperm. That whole shrink ray thing in the submarine seems to be a concept that is often used in media. As far as other cartoons go, I remember this exact premise in both Spongebob and The Simpsons right off the bat. This Family Guy episode predated both of those, however, so maybe it was more original at the time than it seems now. The ending here was fine, of course. A new baby was obviously not going to be brought into the series, but Stewie did gain a future nemesis in Bertram. I think it's a good idea to have another evil genius baby character to rival Stewie and keep him on his toes. The jokes here were fine. The cutaways weren't the best, but the one of Peter abandoning Lois the moment she got threatened was my favourite of them. My favourite scene of the whole thing though had to be Peter stopping at the drive through as Carol was in labour. The way he just casually goes, yeah and a kid's meal? After Lois reminds him about the baby, it's hilarious. Season 3, episode 12, To Love and Die in Dixie. After witnessing a robbery, Chris becomes the target of a criminal. So the FBI decides to relocate the family to the Deep South. While there, Chris befriends a girl named Sam. My best cutaway here was Peter's job interview. And my best moment overall was Stewie playing the banjo. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. This was a rare example of the story and characters being superior to the jokes. This was in essence a travel episode to the South which was kicked off by Peter's stupidity in revealing Chris's identity to the criminal he identified. Things were a bit mixed once the family arrived at their new home. Some of the hillbilly stereotypes were not particularly creative, but it was okay just having Peter and Brian messing around as the sheriffs of the town. Chris and Sam's relationship was actually interesting. They did seem like a cute little couple, it also helped Chris get a bit more confident in talking to girls, so I'm all for it. Even if he did have to think she was a boy for it to work. The ending standoff was fine, with the hillbillies killing the criminal. It's kind of a shame for Chris that things go back to normal at the end, really. This was one of the least funny episodes of the season for me, which explains the rating. Although there were still a few okay moments, like Peter's job interview, where he says doing your son instead of doing your wife and the cutaway of him stabbing the woman in the cake. I also liked how into the banjo Stewie got. He must have some southern spirit in him somewhere. Also, it's fair to say that any episode which introduces Herbert can't be all bad as far as humour goes. Season 3, Episode 13, Screwed the Pooch. The family go to visit Lois's parents, and Peter finally wins the respect of Carter Pudishment. But that respect disappears when Brian humps his racing greyhound and she ends up pregnant. Brian screaming at the baby in the restaurant was undoubtedly my favourite cutaway and the best moment was the bad roaches at the hotel. This one got a 4 out of 5. It was simple yet effective. We got to see that Brian is still very much attracted to dogs and that gets him into trouble with Carter. In general, the whole thing with Brian being into both dogs and humans is a little weird, but oh well. I suppose it's only going to get even more silly as the show goes on. It was nice to see that he was willing to be there for his kids and try to do the right thing. However, the revelation that they weren't his puppies after all was rather silly and made the whole ordeal a bit meaningless. I still liked most of the character interactions though, Mostly with Brian, Peter and Carter. So that's enough for me to give the story a passing grade. There were plenty of punchy jokes here. Which really made the episode. Like the gangster roaches. I cut you up so bad. You're gonna wish I know cut you up so bad. Those are some bad roaches. You also have Peter in his box. Peter's poker face. And of course Brian yelling at the baby. That works so well because you can sense Brian's annoyance. As he screams with the baby. It's relatable too, of course. A screaming baby is indeed annoying. This ended up being another solid episode. Season 3, episode 14. Peter Griffin, husband, father, brother? 
While teaching Chris about his Irish heritage, Peter finds out that he has a black ancestor. However, he soon gets himself into trouble by embracing black culture. My favourite cutaway here was Peter narrating his own life, and my best moment was the ending. This one gets a 5 out of 5. I enjoyed almost all aspects of this one. The first act was maybe a touch slow, as it established Chris getting into black culture, which gave Peter a reason to show him his own heritage, which of course resulted in a finding that he himself had a black ancestor. It fits Peter's character so well to instantly go all in on this finding and start hanging around with black people and trying to fit in with them. The bit about the pudishment owning Nate Griffin as a slave was a bit of a coincidence, but hey, it worked out producing some funny moments, which was the purpose of it. I love how Peter instantly ditches the name change when Carter starts writing him out a check. The ending was also great here. The message of making sure not to get caught up with skin colour was a very simple one, but honestly it's the right one. I think most people should be able to agree on that. The only people who wouldn't, and want to keep obsessing about it, and making it their whole life identity, are racists on both sides who want to keep the division between the races very much alive. You're never going to fix racism or get rid of racism, but the best way to mitigate it, in my opinion, is to not obsess over it and not treat it like a big deal. And the final line about the only colour which really matters is green is also sadly true, I have to say. The powers that be don't care about your skin colour. All they care about is control and how much money they can make. Even Stewie's brief, sheer leading subplot was a fun change of pace. And of course you have the creepy quagmire moment at the end. Given that the story itself here is quite wacky, it's no surprise that the jokes themselves were also good. The scenes at the Irish Museum all worked, as did Peter's awkward attempts to leave. Peter narrating his own life is an absolute classic. It's great how he has absolutely no regards for how Lois feels about his comments. I awoke several hours later in a daze, is the cherry on top. Season 3, episode 15, Ready, Willing and Disabled. When Joe loses a thief in a chase, he also loses his self-confidence and pride as a police officer. Meanwhile, Stewie, Meg and Chris fight over $26. As far as the free cutaways here go, I enjoyed the deaf team sleeping through the alarms. And my best moment was Peter, Cleveland and Quagmire's reaction to Joe's crying. This one gets a 4 out of 5. This started out slightly slow, but rallied towards the end to become a good episode overall. It took a while to really get into Joe's insecurities about not catching the criminal. It's actually a very meaningful thing for him to admit that failing to bring the guy in made him more aware of his handicap. It makes it understandable why he took it so hard and really sells the journey of him getting his confidence back. The special people games was okay with the ever delightful commentary of Tom and Diane. It never gets old how passive aggressive those two are towards each other. The bit about Joe winning because of steroids was a bit silly. It's not like Joe needed them after all and him ignoring Peter after he helped him through his hard time was jerkish behaviour for sure. At least they mostly reconciled by the end, and Joe managed to get a criminal as well. He got him so bad in fact, that he killed him by landing on his spine. Well, those are the breaks I guess. In terms of some of the funny moments here, I love the reactions to Joe's over the top crying. Especially Quagmire's, where he just slowly slides out of frame. Peter's video of him faking an accident was also top class with how you can see him driving the car in the freeze frame. Season 3, Episode 16, A Very Special Family Guy Freaking Christmas. Peter mistakenly donates all of the family's Christmas gifts to a needy kids charity. This causes the pressures of Christmas to mount on Lois, making her flip out and go on a rampage. The best of the three cutaways here was the three wise men, and my best moment was... Brian finding out, at exactly the wrong time, that Peter brought a novelty fire extinguisher instead of a real one. 
So the first Family Guy Christmas episode gets a disappointing 2 out of 5. It wasn't terrible, but I didn't really know what to make of it, as I was watching really. There was a lot going on, especially in the second half, where the pacing went haywire. You had the house burning down, Lois going crazy around town, and trying to destroy the star. Now I'm all for trying to make your Christmas episode special and memorable, but I would argue that there was too much going on here, and it actually had the opposite effect of making it less memorable. It was all so frantic that I struggled to get invested in anything that was going on. Even Stewie's subplot about Santa, I found to be lacklustre by his standards. I don't mean to sound overly negative here, but the comedy was also below par in my opinion. Not many funny moments. The fake fire extinguisher was a nice little gag. You've got to feel sorry for Brian there. Still though, I did expect better for the show's first real attempt at a Christmas episode. Season 3, Episode 17, Brian Wallows and Peter Swallows. After driving drunk, Brian is sentenced with community service. He has to care for a cranky old woman named Pearl. Meanwhile, Peter grows a beard and a rare bird nests in it. My best cutaway here was Brian recalling the worst job he ever had. And my best moment overall was Brian's You've Got A Lot To See song. The Emmy winning song, I might add. This one gets a 5 out of 5. Now I have to admit, I did briefly consider giving this a 4 because I don't find it amazingly funny myself. That being said, I feel it would be folly to dock this episode points just because a few of the jokes weren't to my subjective tastes. After all, this has two of the most solid stories you're ever going to see on Family Guy. Let's start with the main one about Brian first. It's cleverly set up because it starts off with Brian struggling to find a woman who gets him and is into the things he's into. Now previous episodes have hinted at this, but this episode actually showed us by showing us one of his dates first hand. So the fact that they are showing us, rather than telling us Brian's problems, makes him much easier to root for and much more relatable, rather than having him just complain about his life. The scenes when he first met Pearl were nothing special, but of course the last third of the episode is where the two connect, and that's what it's all about. The song is very well done and memorable, I don't have anything more to add on that, but the ending was equally as good and sweet. The VR set was a nice way of letting them have some final moments together before Pearl passed on. It was also a nice touch that she finally got what she wanted in a way which mirrored Brian. Someone to finally understand her and relate to her after shutting herself away for 30 years. So yeah, it was very well constructed and had some great character moments, what can I say? The Peter subplot about growing a beard and housing birds in it was also fun. He had an interesting connection with his little birds. And most of the scenes involving them are just nice. I think that's the best way to describe them. Also, the little sing-along over the kids' piano playing between Brian and Lois was a great little scene. So once again, this was by no means the funniest episode yet, but it may well have been the best from a story and character perspective. Season 3, Episode 18 From Method to Madness Stewie gets enrolled in the Quahog School of Performing Arts. He soon develops a bitter rivalry with a girl called Olivia. Meanwhile, the Griffins meet a family of nudists. My best cutaway here was Elroy Jetson getting kicked out of a bar and picked up in a taxi by Bam Bam Rubble. And my best moment overall was just the family's reaction to the nudists. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. It's just not one I overly enjoyed. I didn't care for the main Stewie plot at all. It seemed tired and obvious what would happen. Now sure, as is standard with Family Guy, the song they do together is fine. And Stewie's sarcastic rant about Olivia's lame, weakest link joke was good. Outside of that though, I could not get into the characters involved. Both Olivia and the show director were just unlikable. The nudist plot was slightly funnier mainly for the Griffin's awkward way of trying to deal with them. I especially liked the family wiping Chris's mind, because all he could say after they left was boobies. I kind of wish more time was devoted to Meg's relationship 
with the nudist boy. It's just nice to see her get some kind of friendship anywhere from anyone, you know. The ending of Peter and Lois getting nude themselves to try and win the boy back for Meg was decent. Although it would have been nice if they made more of a commitment to those two after this episode. I think we see the guy a few more times in a minor role and that's it. The jokes were below par for this season, aside from the sausage one. Trust Peter to go and grab the wrong sausage. Season 3, episode 19. Stuck together, torn apart. Lois runs into and catches up with an old boyfriend, but Peter gets jealous and forbids them from meeting again. Meanwhile, Brian and Stewie become attached at the hand by an adhesive. My best cutaway here was Stewie's head changing shape after he hit it on the ceiling. And my best moment was, dance with me Lois, dance the dance of life. I gave this one a 4 out of 5. I don't have expansive thoughts on this, other than it was very funny. The jokes were definitely the best thing about this. There were lots of great ones, like the subversive one of Peter apparently, but they're not really changing disguises to get more free samples. The cutaway of Stewie banging his head is iconic, going from a normal shaped head to his saucer-like shaped head that he has now, as well as the scene of Cleveland getting the minority treatment in Joe's cop van. My favourite bit though was Peter going off on one to Lois. Not only because it's hilarious how he trips and goes flying into the cabinet, but also because it's just a type of over-the-top stupidity which works for his character. The actual story I didn't care much about. Not a lot actually happened. We were just filling time until Peter and Lois got back together again. So the whole trial separation thing did absolutely nothing for me. The Stewie and Brian subplot of them getting stuck together was decent. It kind of reminded me of a Flintstones episode where Fred and Barney got glued together, each touching the sides of a bowling ball. I'm not accusing Family Guy of copying necessarily, because it is quite a generic plot point or trope, whatever you want to call it. But Steph McFarlane was a fan of the Flintstones growing up, so who knows. Either way, there are enough laughs here to make it a worthwhile watch. Season 3, Episode 20, Road to Europe. Stewie's obsession with the British TV programme Jolly Farm leads him and Brian on an adventure across Europe. Meanwhile, Peter and Lois go to Kiss Stock. And there was only one cutaway here. So by default, my favourite one was the professor telling Peter to use the phrase faux pas. Although again, it wasn't a particularly good one. It was just the only one. And my best moment was the on-the-spot kiss quiz. I gave this one a 3 out of 5. Kind of a surprise for a Road 2 episode, especially when I do remember this being really good. But on this viewing, I couldn't massively get into it. Even when skimming back through the episode a second time, everything seemed a bit plodding and unimportant. Stewie and Brian take the long way to get to London, and their European tour was not that entertaining. Things like the shouting German tour guy on the bus or them stealing a camel was just meh. That being said, the song was at least okay. The ending was fairly predictable with Stewie finding out that Jolly Farm was just a show and a pretty crappy show at that. But Brian was a nice friend to him at least. The way he tried to cheer him up was kind of endearing. It's slowly starting to make you believe that when the chips are down, those two do genuinely care for each other and have a very real friendship. The subplot was okay. It had the best jokes of the episode. I enjoyed the impromptu kiss quiz between Peter and the nudist guy, and just seeing how obsessed people were over the band Kiss was fun. I assume it's fairly realistic too. Kiss do seem like the type of band who would have a really hardcore fan base. Overall, this was fine. Just slightly disappointing by Row 2 standards. Season 3, Episode 21, Family Guy Viewer Mail, Number 1. Brian and Stewie tell us three different stories, inspired by letters from viewers. There were no cutaways here at all, so I don't have to bother with that. But my best moment was the family all using their superpowers. I gave this one a 3 out of 5 again. This was a nice change at least. Up until this point, the show hasn't really changed up the format too much, so it's nice to see them experiment with a three-parter. That being said, the episode never really excelled. There were a few fun moments, sure, 
but none of the parts left any kind of impact after I finished with them. Part 1 with Peter wishing he had no bones was okay. I liked how scared everyone got when it happened and how he made the most out of his situation as a Hollywood stunt bag. And let's be real here, just the image of Peter's boneless blobby body was an amusing one. Aside from a bit of visual humour though, this part had no actual meat on the bone. Part 2 was a pick of the three stories in my view. It was very interesting to see how the Griffins used their superpowers. Of course, they let their powers go to their head. What else would happen? And they kept highlighting how lame Meg's power was of being able to grow her fingernails long. She's like Wolverine, only without the coolness and regeneration. Mayor West's response to rolling around in toxic waste himself was also funny. Not much happened in the final part. But I guess it was cool to see the cast as kids. Death showing up as a kid was probably my favourite moment here. Overall, this was a decent change of pace, and on the high end of a three, I just felt that it lacked the real standout moments to get higher. Season 3, Episode 22, When You Wish Upon a Weinstein. After a Jewish man helps him get his money back from a con man, Peter attempts to convert Chris to Judaism. My best cutaway here was Obi-Wan getting Luke to use the force to perform laser eye surgery. And my best moment was Peter getting tricked into buying volcano insurance. The season finale gets a 4 out of 5. This one started very strong with the somewhat famous volcano insurance scenes with the sleazy salesman. Every line in that scene was great. The way Peter tells him to come in because he too had an uncle. As well as the revelation that Peter really did buy Handsome Cream. I also liked the I Need A Jew song of course. So between all this and a fairly good selection of cutaways the episode had, it was fairly entertaining. I have to say though, it tailed off a bit in the last act. Mainly because the whole bit about Peter trying to give Chris a bar mitzvah fell a bit flat. It was a stupid idea to begin with and it was fairly obvious that Lois would swoop in just in time to stop it. At least the scene of Lois making Brian spill the beans by using a dog whistle on him was good. So yeah, story-wise this was a free at best, but I feel the comedy is great. The jokes here still hold up, as well as any in a series in my opinion. So that's season 3 of Family Guy in the books, and here is a summary. The overall average score is a 3.6, which is up from last time, but not by much. My top 5 episodes were A Fish Out of Water sneaks in as the only 4 out of 5 and as you can see there were 4 5 out of 5 and they were Mr Saturday Night at 4 Brian Wallows and Peter Swallows at 3 Mr Griffin Goes to Washington at 2 and Peter Griffin Husband Father Brother at 1 although there wasn't a lot to split them top episodes to be honest you could rearrange the top 3 in any order you want but as someone who generally values comedy more than story, especially in these type of shows, I picked the first two over Brian's episode. So of course I can now give you my take on this season. As far as my thoughts go, it's another good one for sure, which I did enjoy. Slightly better than season 2, without being a massive jump. Again, these episodes seem fairly steady, with half of the season being rated 4 or better. The fact that there were so many middle of the road free rated episodes is what holds the overall rating back from being higher. Once again I have to credit the show for being consistent and having no real bad episodes. When every episode has at least some entertainment then it's a sign of a good show and is very easy to watch and follow for an entire season. As far as the direction and tone of this season that was fairly similar too. Like the first two seasons, it still had a fairly sitcom -y vibe where the family is in a bunch of weird situations which keep getting exacerbated by their own stupidity and bad decisions. We have not yet got to the darker era of Family Guy where there is more of a switch to shock humour and controversial issues. I know that comes fairly soon after the show got renewed so I'll keep an eye out for that. Another thing to note is that I can see signs here of Meg starting to get the short end of the stick. It's by no means full on Meg abuse yet, but she is often the butt of the joke and gets treated as less important than the others in general. As far as the cutaways and comedy, again it's mostly good stuff. Although there were slightly fewer cutaways in general here, 
than the first two seasons. Again though, overall I have to say, given how few bad episodes there are, I don't really have any major complaints or criticisms of the show at this point in its cycle. This series has not been a chore at all to do so far, in fact I've been enjoying the show, so I hope you're all with me on that. As ever, please take a few seconds to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and leave a comment if you want to discuss anything about the show with me. But for now guys, I'll catch you next time. Take care.